Hello everyone, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. This video is going to be a little bit more system admin oriented. We are going to have a look at the top utility and at processes in Linux in general. So the top utility is going to give you an overview of the processes running on your system and it's going to help you troubleshooting if something is wrong. So without further ado, let's jump into the terminal and see what we can do with the top utility. So guys, here we are on the desktop of Arch. This is just a normal installation. I just installed the base system and very quickly a desktop environment. And the purpose of this video is to show you how you can control processes in your system. Now, this is something which is not flashy. It's something which has nothing to do with customization, but it's something essential that you need to know for your machine if you're running a Linux operating system. So like in any other OS, there are processes working under the hood here. And, you know, sometimes when you have a problem with your computer or it gets slow, you might want to check actually what's going on in the computer so that you can begin troubleshooting. So for this, there is actually an application which comes already pre-installed in every Linux distribution which is called TOP. Now there are many variations of this utility, HTOP is one of the popular ones, but in this video I'm going to use TOP because it's already pre-installed and you don't have to install anything else to use it. So to use this let's just type in here on the terminal TOP and hit enter. Note that this is going to be run as a normal user and I will explain you after what are the limitations on using this utility as a normal user. So I'm just going to hit enter here and here we have our overview. Now let me actually decrease slightly the font size to get more information here. Now let's have a look what we see here. So on the first line, we basically see the output of the uptime command. So if you type in, in the terminal uptime, you will see exactly this information. So we'll see the time. We'll see how long this system has been running. We see here how many users are logged in into the system. And then we'll see here the load average of the system. Now the three different parts here represents the minutes. So the first one is every minute. The second one is every five minutes and the third one is every 15 minutes. So by looking at these numbers, I can already see that this computer has not been doing much in the last 15 minutes. And that's totally OK, because this is just a demo machine. Now, in the second line here, we can see the tasks. So we have a total of 187 tasks in the system. One is right now running and 186 are sleeping. It means actually they can be activated anytime and they will display down here in the running processes. Now we have zero stop processes and this is the way it should be because stop processing means something happening to the system. And then we have zombie processes, which are basically processes which cannot communicate anymore with the parent process and therefore are not anymore able to work. Then we have the line for the CPUs. Now this is divided in several fields here. The first one is representing user space processes and the second one is representing system processes. So right now we don't have much working here because as I said, this is just a demo machine. We have also processes which have been re-niced. So the concept of re-nice and nicing processes will be maybe explored in another video, but just to make it short here, basically you can change the priority that you want to give to a process. And that's where actually the limitation is coming in to run top as a normal user instead of a root user. Because if you want to give a highest priority to a process, you can do it only as a root user. However, if you want to give a lower priority to a process, you can do it also as a normal user. Then we have ID, which stands for idle. So my system here is actually really doing almost nothing. And then we have WA. WA means basically the system is waiting for hardware input output. So right now we have nothing working there. We have HI, which stands for hardware interrupts and SI and ST, which stands for software interrupts. And SD is just useful if you're running this on virtualization. So we are not going to have a look at these parameters anyway. Then underneath we have memory usage. Now this is basically the result of what will happen if you would type in the terminal free dash M for example, or free dash H. And we can see here the total memory. We'll see the free memory available in the system. We'll see what's used. And also we see here the buffer and the cache. Now we see the same information for swap. At the moment, nothing is used on swap. That's why I have here used zero. Now we can display here also other informations for the CPUs. So if you hit the number one on the keyboard, you can see this machine has four cores 
and you can see how the load is actually on every CPU. That is for user space and system space. So if you have multiple CPUs, you will see them here in the list and you can contract this line by typing one again. Now the same goes for memory. Now we have a numerical representation for the memory usage, but if we hit M, for example, on the keyboard, you can see we have here another graphical representation with a percentage of the memory. And if we hit M again, it's also a little bit different. And if we hit one more time M, we don't see any memory usage here. And by hitting M one more time, we go back to the first display. So this is the basic information here that we have on top. And then we have here underneath the process themselves. So the most important field you have here is the PID or the process ID. This is the one you need because if you need to kill some of these processes, the top utility will ask you for the PID. Then we have the user which is running this process. We have the priority given to this process. We have the nice value which is given to this process. And then we have some other parameters here that I'm not going to explore in this video. We have the CPU usage here and the memory usage and also the time of the process and also the command used. Now, normally you would sort this by CPU usage because there are some processes which might take up more CPU than others. So to do this, we can hit on the keyboard Shift P. And as you can see, we have the first process here on the list, which is using right now 3% CPU. And if you want to order this by memory usage, you can hit on the keyboard Shift M. Now, you can see the first process remained the same because the GNOME shell is actually using more memory than anything else, but the order of memory usage actually changed by following other processes. Now, you can also use different ways to do this. You can hit, for example, Shift F here on the top utility, and here you can see basically other fields that are not displayed and the ones that are displayed. So if you want to have also other fields displayed here, you can scroll down and hit spacebar, for example, and this real username will be displayed now if I hit Q. You can see here we have it on the right side. Now, this is not so useful, but it's just to show you how this works. So let me go back with Shift F and I'm going to remove this field here and let's hit Q to quit this view. Now, I don't want to remove the GNOME shell because otherwise my system will crash. So let me exit the utility here by hitting Q and clean up the terminal. Now, let me type in here one command and put it in the background because I want to show you how it's going to impact the top utility or our system, otherwise said. So let's type in dd and then if equal slash dev slash zero. And that's going to be enough. And I'm going to add here the ampersand to put this process in the background and hit enter. Now I'm going to type in again top to go back to the top utility. And as you can see here, we have the DD command, which is also using quite a lot of CPU. So let's order this list by CPU usage by hitting shift P. Now you can see the terminal is using a lot of process power because the DD utility is working in there. So if something like this would happen in your system and there is a process which is using a lot of CPU and you would like to actually shut it down, we have several ways on how we can do this. So the easiest way to do this is actually to kill the process. To do this on the top utility, we can type in K for kill. And you can see we have a new line here which asks PID to signal or to kill. And by default, it's going to pick up actually the first one, which is using the most CPU. But that's not the one I want. The one I want is the DD utility. And so the PID for that is 2367. So I'm going to type in here 2367 and hit enter. Now, I need to tell the system which signal I want to send. Now, here we have to be very careful. There are a lot of signals we can send to the system for killing processes. The default one is the signal 15, which you already see here in square brackets. And that's the one you should use the most. The signal 15 is basically telling to the system, please shut down once you clean up your mess. So it gives basically a chance to the process to clean itself up and then shut down properly. So this is what I'm going to do. I could actually just hit enter here or type in 15 and then hit enter. And you can see the DD command is now gone. And the CPU usage on the terminal is also basically nothing. Now, the big difference if you're using the 15 signal or the 9 signal, the 9 signal is basically killing the process right away without giving the chance to the process to close down itself. So if you're working on something, let's say, and you're closing the process with signal 9, chances are that you will lose all informations in there. So by default, always try to use first signal 15 and use signal 9 just if it's absolutely necessary. 
Now, this is a very basic troubleshooting of the system. By looking at the top utility, which gives you an overview of the processes running, you can sort them via CPU usage or memory usage, and then you can troubleshoot from there and eventually kill processes with signal 15 or signal 9. Again, the most important piece of information here in this utility is the PID, which is the process ID that you will need to specify if you need to kill some of these processes. In future videos, I'm going to have a look how you can actually reorder priorities here by using the nice or re nice command. But as I said, this is going to be a topic for future videos. So if you have any question about this video or about the top utility, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. So there you go. This is the top utility in Linux. This will work in any Linux distribution. The top utility should be actually installed by default. And that's the reason also why I didn't install other utilities like HTOP, which is a variation of the top utility. So if you have any question about the top utility or processes in Linux in general, let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as usual as soon as I can. I hope you liked this video guys, if you did please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always help me out and if you want to support my work you can do so by visiting my Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.